What's up everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be checking out some differences between what Walmart sells and that is the Bear Mountain Aluminum 27.5 inch bike and we're comparing it right up against the most popular bike out there which is the Trek Merlin 5. So this is an aluminum bike, it is the Bear Mountain by Hyper Bikes. Hyper has been around for a long time and they've made a large variety of bikes from BMXs to everything. We actually went to Walmart to check one out, and um, obviously this is a slight comparison. We are looking at a $230 Canadian, so I assume that's less than $200 US bike, comparing it against now a nearly $900 Canadian bike and close to a you know $800 American bike. The racks Walmart has are kind of cool, so I'll give them 0 0.1 for that. The rest of the presentation goes down the hole from there compared to the regular bike shops. Overall, it's uh, it's a bicycle. It will work. It does have suspension and tires, rim brakes, which they call linear rear and front pull brakes, has 21 speeds, and it does actually come with a 27 and a half inch rim, which is actually pretty impressive. It is just the twist shifter on there, so it's nothing fancy. Obviously, nothing is fancy about this bike, but Walmart does describe it as popular for trails and casual riding. The full suspension improves handling for off-road on this 27.5-inch Hyper Bear mountain bike. It has durable aluminum dual suspension frame, 21-speed twist shifters with Shimano rear derailleur, and a premium padded and adjustable saddle alloy wheels and three-piece cranks front and rear linear pull brakes the cables are all exposed throughout this entire bike which is obviously a bit of a downside wear wise one thing i did notice was just how dirty you get this bike straight from the store i don't know if that's just because it's been there all summer or that's how they come out of the box but it could be a little bit better presentation walmart i will say that Overall, the assembled weight of this thing is 37.81 pounds. That includes pedals, um, for all you weight weenies out there. That does include pedals, so you don't need to worry about adding that to it. Um, when we look at a Marlin 5, though, you are shaving away instantaneously 5 plus pounds of weight. And a lot of that will be in the wheels and the frame and... Although it's aluminum, it's just not going to be as high quality aluminum. The welds throughout it are a little bit more bulky and overdone. Um, rim brakes normally weigh less, which is interesting, than disc brakes. So Trek Marlin 5, you actually get hydraulic disc brakes on it. So stopping power is going to be immensely better on the Marlin 5 comparatively to this. The rim brakes, though, are cheap to repair, and that's uh, that's a point there, I guess. Overall, Walmart's uh, maximum recommended age for this bike is 99 years old, and the minimum rec recommended age is 10 years old. I don't even believe Trek does a recommendation like that, so good on Walmart for shouting out that a 99-year-old can ride this bike. Um, I'm sure they could ride the Trek Merlin too. I'm just not sure if Trek knows that or not. Overall, with a bike like this, you are getting a smaller stem. Obviously, it's not the three-piece setup. It's not like a proper true stem. It is the more basic quill style, I believe it's called. They work kind of well. They're not easy to replace if there's damaged parts. And they obviously are not anywhere near as strong. They're just a weaker, softer more likely to bend with one small impact and that is a downside overall that's why when you go to a trek merlin you look at things like this oversized stem and then even the handlebars are a thicker diameter it's going to be more durable it's going to take a beating as well it will even feel better throughout its trail riding abilities and even just going around town for casual riding a trek merlin will feel much better an extra Five plus pounds is pretty huge to be dragging around. The tires on it are not superb. Obviously, they are meant for more road use. You're not going to get a huge amount of traction on them in the off-road side of things. 
So if you were doing trail riding, I would highly recommend you upgrade that and change it out. With the Trek Marlin 5, you now get two gears on the front and eight on the back. With this one, you get simply three on the front and seven on the back. It is Shimano, um, although it doesn't say in any which way what model or anything <laughs> like that. So obviously it's not yeah. something high end. It's just the most entry level made by Shimano. So what that'll mean is a noticeable difference in shifting. It will be slower to shift. It won't be as snappy and forgiving. There's a higher chance of the chain falling off. Overall, the Trek Marathon is gonna shift much better. And again, this is why you pay potentially three times the price. You are gonna get three times the difference. And if not, three times difference is probably way higher than that. The rear suspension, um, the Marlin does not have. It is a hardtail mountain bike, and this Bear Mountain from Hyperbikes does have a rear suspension. It is a unique suspension design. I don't think much efficiency has gone into it. I treat it more like a really heavy seat post suspension. You're not going to get much performance out of this. I would be highly, highly surprised if you got braking power and controllability because of that rear suspension. It is adjustable from the looks of it to a minor degree where you can add a bit more tension to the spring. I don't know how effective that would be on the trails again. You're really just going to ramp up your preload without having any control of the compression as much as you'd like. Um, so I'd call it a downside. It has it except for going through a pothole, it will give a little bit more comfort. Overall, it's a dusty bike. I do see some benefits to going to a bike shop where they won't come out as dusty. The fitting will be much better. The overall bike obviously comes as one size from Walmart. There is no sizes to it in, in that bike. It just doesn't have a size it's just a one size fits all 27 and a half inch rim and anyone can ride it as long as you're between the ages of 10 and 99 obviously with the trek marlin bikes you are now starting at extra extra small and going all the way up to an extra extra large including having a medium slash large size in the middle there there's a lot of size options you can get a really good fitting bike and it's going to be a lot lighter way easier to handle even more customizability just straight out of the back. There's a few more mounting points and a lot more durability to it. You're definitely gonna have the Trek Marlin for a lot longer than you would a bear mountain. Obviously, I'd like to take this out for a trail ride, so maybe we'll pick one up next season and try it out. But for now, we're just gonna have to imagine that what I'm saying is correct. And seeing so I've tried a, quite a few bikes, I know what most brakes feel like. These don't look like the highest quality of rim brake. They don't look like the highest quality of shifting. And it's just a really nice thing to look at to compare and make sure what you're buying is actually worth it. For nearly $300, it's actually kind of high priced in my mind. Um, realistically, I feel like 200 Canadian or even like $140 US would be a pretty fair price for something like this. Everything's entry level with it. It doesn't have any special features. The grips are pretty cheap looking. Lots of things look like they'll wear and tear and fall off pretty quickly. As well, I wouldn't 100% trust the build quality on it. Um, I'd always do a double check on all the torque settings, if it even has any, compared to like a Trek Marlin, which would come from an actual bike shop with trained bike mechanics from Trek themselves, from experienced builders. It's the difference which is going to make a bike which is going to last a long time. Interior wise, obviously the bearings are going to be of lower quality. So if you go out and buy a Trek Marlin and break the rim, it's not because you got a dud or something like that. You're just ready for a new bike or it's a fluke. But if you go out there and bend a rim on this bike, the Bear Mountain, it's because it's cheap. It's uh, going to be a low quality. The spokes aren't going to be even as high quality. The rim is not going to be as high quality. It's just made for more casual riding, even though it says trail. So you can definitely do it. It's just, it's, you know, it's more of a descriptor than an actual recommendation, I think. 
Anyway, so hopefully this video helps a few people, confirms what they're thinking, and that is that the Trek bikes are much higher quality and potentially persuade someone to bite the bullet and spend a little bit more money. There's tons of different options out there for getting these bikes, especially with winter around the corner. It's definitely something you can save up for over the winter. You know, you'll definitely go through three of these bare mountain bikes in the lifespan that you would go through a Trek Merlin, and that's almost guaranteed. The only reason you might outride the Trek Merlin is because simply you are using it way more than you ever thought you did. Anyway, guys, hopefully this video helps. My name's Chris, and good luck. Yeah. I think we got a climb coming up over here. I thought I heard bagpipes. <laughs> it's just squeaky brakes. All right, continue then. <laughs> I was like, is someone playing bagpipes? <laughs> Which would be a wacky woods person thing to do, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah.